Hi, Mike Stish here from Hackaday.com. I wanted to take a look at the new prototype for the Yo-Yo board. Uh, it's spelled I-O-I-O. -I -O. It's an add-on for Android devices, um, which gives you a hardware breakout. So you get all of these uh, input-output pins uh, that you can do a lot of different stuff with and easily access from um, Android apps. Uh, it's not a new board, it's actually a new revision of a pretty popular board, um, but it brings a few things that we think you'll be interested in. Uh, we got our hands on this early prototype um, from its creator, Itai Bensvi. He sent it in and uh, you know, gave us a little bit of background information on how things are going. Uh, first, let's take a look at the board itself. Um, so you can see, uh, if you're familiar with the previous version, the form factor of the board is uh, basically the same and the size is the same. Um, but there has been a little bit of layout changes. Uh, for instance, uh, these three... Um, uh, footprints for breakout headers on the voltage in and ground right here used to be up on the top and um, they've been moved down to the bottom. Uh, this connector, it's a JST connector for um, external power for the device. Uh, that I believe there's a footprint for that on the original um, that was not populated and so this is now populated. Uh, it's also um, quite obvious that this uh, USB header right here is different. Uh, now the original Yo-Yo board had a USB-A port, um, you know, kind of your standard uh, large USB um, plug uh, for USB host mode. Now this one has a micro B connector, and uh, it's because this board can be used for either USB host mode or USB on the go. And that's actually what this switch, this toggle switch, is new right here. This switch is made for that, um, and you can see there's uh, an S over here and uh, an H over here. The H is, uh, when the switch is on the H side, it forces the board into host mode. When the switch is on the S side, um, it actually is in, the, I guess that S is for select, uh, but uh, apparently the production board, that S is going to be an A for auto, um, and the board will automatically detect whether it's being called to do uh, USB host mode or, or USB on the go. Um, the chip is a, a PIC chip, just like before. It's a 24FJ256. Um, this is what kind of handles all of the communications. It does the USB itself uh, and uh, takes care of turning all of your Java code into you know, the different hardware functions that you want this board to do. Um, there's a little bit of a change with the um, voltage regulation up here. Um, this, uh, this chip, 3.3 volt switching regulator is um, a newer part. It's, it sources some, uh, more current than the last version, so it sources two amps of current and um, you know it's, it's pretty efficient since it's a switching supply, um, which is pretty nice. Now, um, in order to make this uh, board you know user friendly, um, apparently the the uh, final version is going to come with an adapter cable like this one that has the uh, um, uh, female A to micro B. Now this, uh, we actually ordered this ourselves, um, so it may look different, but it's going to perform the same um, function. And the purpose of it is so that you can plug um, the micro B into the board and then use whatever USB cable came with your Android device. Uh, but it, it is um, also possible uh, to use this with a PC. And, um, you know, we talked a little bit with uh, Itai, and he said that um, it, it, he's been working on uh, getting this to work with the emulator um, in the Android uh, uh, IDE. So that would be a pretty interesting thing to be able to, um, you know, just use a computer and emulation to do all the development before, you know, having to juggle USB ports with the phone and all that sort of thing. So, you know, we're kind of interested in that. Um, one of the things that we like, and they had this on the first board too, but it's worth mentioning again, is uh, that there's labeling. So whenever there's a possibility to label these things, he's he's done it, and we like that. So you can you can look and see, you know, some of the pin functions here um, are labeled on the back. We also like it if you look at this. Um, capital P is for peripheral I/O, and uh, you'll see that there are um, the P labeled pins right there. Um, PI is peripheral in. So, you know, this one, it sounds a little confusing. If the other are I.O., what's the deal with peripheral in? Um, 
I'm not really sure. I think it might be uh, connected to a pin interrupt because there was some mention when I was looking around about being able to measure pulse width modulation and that sort of thing. Um, but these last two are very, very nice. So you have um, any uh, via that's in a box, in a white box on the silk screen, is going to be an analog in, so it's connected to a multiplexer for the ADC, and then any circle is going to be 5 volt tolerant. And um, you know, in order to use this board, you're going to need to you know solder something to it. And you know, for us, it's probably going to be like uh, we've got these female pin headers, or um, you can use a male pin header like this. But if you do that, it's going to cover up um, you know the circles that are on the board. It's going to do a lot of covering up there. But uh, you know, good design takes that into account, and we get the silk screen, the boxes, and the circles on both sides. Um, and of course, you know, the, the uh, lettering is still going to be visible if you do solder pin headers onto there. So that's kind of nice. Um, now, this isn't in production yet, but we're getting pretty close. Um, we did just talk to uh, Itai today, and he said um, there is a short hold because they found an issue with um, uh, the protection when 5 volts shorted the ground. He went, you know, since this is a development board, he doesn't want it to be like easy to accidentally um, fry something and so they're respinning the board um, just to fix that layout error so that um, no matter how you short something it's not going to burn out chips on it um, or you know reasonably no matter how you do that uh, he also mentioned that uh, there will be new graphics so right now there's a spark fun logo right here but um, what he showed us today has uh, a picture of the t a toy yo-yo you know y-o-y-o um, uh, which I think is a good idea because it uh, it helps people who are unfamiliar with figuring out how to say the name of this. Um, and uh, the solder mask is going to be um, white like it was before right, with a black silk screen. So it'll be um, kind of that, that easily recognizable white breakout board. Now, um, price is always an interesting thing to talk about. And uh, in, um, he couldn't give us a, a great, uh, you know, he couldn't give us a solid number um, but we talked to him uh, about the $30 price tag that um, had kind of been floated out there when we first heard about this new version of the board. Um, and it sounds like things are looking good to get to that price point, but he just can't say for sure until they get all of the um, production choices worked out. So we're going to keep our fingers crossed. I think the original board is still retailing for about um, $49.99. Boy, a $30 price tag really makes this into um, something that's easier to pull the trigger on even if you don't have uh, you know, a specific project in mind. Um, $30 is a very reasonable uh, risk for something that I think will become very, very useful for you if you're interested in any type of hardware peripherals for um, Android devices. And we've already seen a ton of them. Um, the, uh, the original board works with Bluetooth. Um, and I can't think, you know, this would as well, um, you can just get a Bluetooth dongle and uh, put it into the, uh, the little adapter cable um, and then you don't even need to be uh, uh, attached with a cable to the phone. So that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, so that's the new prototype of the yo-yo board. Uh, I'm Mike Stish for Hackaday.com.